Configuring Cisco router can be a tough call if you've never done it before. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a Cisco router from scratch. Hi, this is David Godibadze from IT Solutions Network. I've been in the IT world for over 20 years and now I have my own YouTube channel. Let's get started. Okay, let's let's start. So I have a computer here with the static IP addresses on it, and I have a Cisco router with the empty configuration. There's no startup configuration at all, and there's an ISP. We have subnet and the IP addresses from the ISP, and we have internal network uh, information. This is the Cisco device, and it has no configuration at all. This is the first boot. And as you can see, we get all these messages during the first boot. So we need to go into enable mode. And in the enable mode, we can try and run the command show IP interface brief, which will give us the information about the interfaces we have. They are all are down, means disabled, and we'll have the IP address assigned to it. As you can see in the topology, we're gonna use Gigabit Ethernet 2 for the inside interface and we're gonna use Gigabit Ethernet 1 as an outside interface. Let's get started and configure them. Show IP interface brief will show us information about the interfaces we have. So we have four interfaces, all of them are shut down and we don't have the IP addresses on them. We need to configure these interfaces in order to you know, have the configured router. First, we're gonna configure the Gigabit Ethernet 1. That's in our outside interface. IP address 12.34.56.2. As you can see on the topology in the background, that's our IP address. We need to enable this interface and then we need to configure the Gigabit Ethernet 2 with the IP address 192.168.2.1. Slash 24 again, no shutdown. So let's see what we have now. This is what we have. We have outside, inside IP. This is what we have. We have inside IP, we have outside IP, and let's try in the ping ISP IP address. That would be dot one. Okay, we, ping, we can ping ISP and we enabled interfaces. Let's see if the computer can ping a Cisco router. Okay, we already have the IP address on the computer and let's go ahead and try to ping Cisco router by typing ping 192.168.2.1. Okay, we can ping Cisco device, perfect. Let's move on and uh, try to add the default gateway the reason why we need to add the default gateway because Cisco doesn't know how to go to the outside world. So if we ping Google DNS, Cisco won't be able to ping that because it doesn't have a clue where to go. And to make sure we can check show IP route, and as you can see, there is no default route in the routing table. So what we are going to do to fix that is we're gonna add the routing table, we, we're gonna add the default gateway into routing table. And our default gateway will be 12.34.56.1. And if we check routing table again, we'll see that now we have this default gateway. And if we ping Google DNS, we should be able to ping them, ping it. Okay, perfect. We can ping Google DNS, but that's not enough to allow in inside computers to surf the internet. So if you ping Google DNS from the computer, you won't be able to ping it. The reason for that is that we don't get the answers from the ISP because ISP doesn't know about these internal subnets at all. So what we need to do is translate this source subnet, any IP from the subnet, into public IP, which is 12.34.56.2. And to do that, we need to create an access list to match the traffic. Then we need to put the global configuration for the net and we need to do NAT configuration on the interfaces. So let's create the first the access list. Permit to match the traffic we need to use permit. Permit IP and our source subnet would be 
our internal subnet and any destination. Then we need to put the actual NAT configuration. Uh, we're gonna use the access list we just created and we want to translate our source subnet into Gigabit Ethernet 1 IP address. And we need to enable IP NAT inside and IP NAT outside on the interfaces. Perfect. So now we should be able to ping Google, D Google DNS from the Windows computer and we are able to ping it. Okay, now let's make it easier. We want to have the DHCP server running on the network because we don't like to use static IPs just like we have on this Windows computer. And for that we need to create DHCP configuration on the Cisco device. Let's first exclude several IPs from the pool because we could use these IPs to manage the access points, switches, or all sorts of stuff. IP DHCP. Excluded address. 192.168.2.1. And let's make it 10. Okay. So all the IPs from this range will be excluded from being assigned on the computers. Now let's create the actual DHCP pool, name, that, name it LAN subnet, put the network, put the default gateway because we obviously need to have the default gateway on the computer but once the computer gets the IP address from the DHCP server and we also need to have the DNS server. So let's Let's do the DNS server as well. Perfect. Let's go ahead and try to change it to the DHCP client instead of static IP, instead of manual IP, and see what's going to happen. Okay, so this is our first IP.11, remember, because we excluded all the first 10 IPs, all the IPs from this range, first 10 IPs, and that's why we have .11. We have the same subnet as the configuration and we have the gateway as per our configuration and of course we have the DNS because we included the DNS in the DHCP configuration. Perfect, it's, it's done. Now let's configure the remote access because we don't want to use the console cable and physically connect to the router every time we want to run the command or check the status or you know like troubleshoot or change the configuration. Let's go ahead and enable AAA new model which is authentication, authorization, and accounting, and create a username, Cisco, and the password, Cisco123. Now, you might have seen that uh, some people use password instead of secret, but remember, password is not good. It's bad. It's unencrypted. It can be decrypted. It's no good. Just don't use it. So every time you have to create the username inside the Cisco device, use secret instead of password, okay? And we need to create the enable password because we didn't add the privilege mode on the user here. You can actually do that from here. Hmm, we cannot. That's weird. Okay. So now let's create the uh, enable password. And again, we use secret, not the password. You have an option here to use the password, but use secret. It's more secure. And our password will be SASA. Okay, perfect. Now, in order to allow, to, let's first connect through the telnet and see how it works. Cisco, Cisco123, enable password, SASA. Perfect, it's there. But remember, telnet is not good because it's a plain text. If someone captures the traffic, they can see the password. That's why we want to use SSH. And in order to use SSH, we need to generate SSH keys. And to generate SSH keys, we need to assign host name and we need to give domain name. So let's go ahead and do that. Host name would be R1 and IP domain name would be David Lab Local. Okay, that will work. 
crypto key generate RSA. This is how we generate SH keys and we give the maximum bit uh, key size because we want to be more secure, you know, we like security. And because SH version 1.99 is vulnerable, we want to change it to version 2. Okay, perfect. Now, if you remember, we didn't disable the telnet. So if we'll try to connect, we'll still, we are still able to connect to it, which is not cool. We need to disable telnet. And to do that, we go into line with the line, no zero up to what we have, 98. And we do transport input SSH. And we don't include telnet, only SSH. This will disable telnet and nobody can use telnet anymore which is good because you know we don't want someone to use the telnet we only want to use sh right now we want to make it more secure so let's add the axle on the outside interface and only and on virtual interface for the sh ip access list standard so we want to allow connections only from the from this computer with IPs.11 I believe yes let's go ahead and uh, try to add this IP only with UI filter permit 192.168.211 and assign this access list to the virtual port this is how you do that. Access class, which you have filters, filter and for inbound connections, incoming connections. Cool. Now we run this access list. There's no match because we haven't tried to connect to it. But if we try using party again, for example, we will be able to see match in this access list you see so if we change the IP on the computer we won't be able to connect to the Cisco device anymore using this using the I, different IP because we didn't put the whole subnet here we put only one IP now let's create access list for the outside interface outside filter and let's add some of the lines there so first Let's allow the ICMP echo replies because if we ping something from the inside world, like this, for example, right, we want to receive replies. And to do that, we need to allow ICMP echo replies. We're gonna allow the ICMP echo replies only. So, what this line says that the permit ICMP protocol coming from any host coming from any source to the host of our public IP and if it's echo reply, okay? So that means if someone pings our IP from the outside, they will not be able to get the response. But if we ping from the inside, we will get the response. Permit UDP any equal domain and host 12.34.56.2. Now what it does, what this does is we allow to we allow DNS responses to come in inside the router from the outside world because when we try to ping Google, for example, or Apple, the computer will try to resolve the IP address, and for that the computer will use port 53 on Google DNS. And that's what we are saying that the permit UDP protocol coming from any locate any source that the source port is domain 50 that's a UDP port 53 and this is not the UDP port this is just on 50 port 53 and this is how we said that it's a UDP so it's a UDP port 53 and if the response comes to the IP with the destination in IP header 12.34.56.2, allow that. And 
Also, when we try to surf the internet, for example, google.com uh, or apple.com, we want to allow these responses also to come in without allowing anything extra. So for that, we do permit TCP any, any source to the destination 12.34.56.2. And here's the keyword here. Oh, hold on. And here's the keyword here. Established match established connections that means if that means if the connection is reply for the connection that was initiated from the inside it will allow that but the new connections for example someone's trying to ssh or someone's trying to do any kind of tcp connection router will not allow that it will drop the connection because it's not the reply for the connection initiated from the inside now let's assign this access list to the outside interface for that, we go into interface configuration mode and type IP access group, then access list name, outside filter, and direction of the packets. In our case, that's inbound. So if we try to see the interface configuration, this is what we have. We have IP address. We say that it's a not outside interface. This is the access list. By the way, we can see match here. You see, there's no match yet, right? Okay, we have two lines because yeah, I accidentally typed and uh, pressed the enter here. Let's remove that. Okay, perfect. Now, let's go ahead and try to resolve the IP address and ping. So, because of this command we ran on the Windows machine, we will be able to see match here and match here. You see, we have four packets because Windows pings sends four ping packets by default. And we have one match because we tried to resolve the IP address. And if we also try to telnet on port 80, we should get match here on the third line. And of course we have it. Now let's save the configuration because it, it's already done. We already configured everything we wanted in this session and uh, it's now time to save the configuration. Copy, running configuration, startup configuration. So what we say here is take configuration from the memory and save it into startup config file. So next time when we boot the router, it will load the configuration from the startup config file. And this is it. Basic configuration of the Cisco router is done. We have assigned the IP address. We enable the network address translation. We add the static route. We configure the remote access. And we add some little bit security to protect from, to protect our remote access and to protect the outside interface from the internet garbage. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. And before I forget, please subscribe to the channel for the upcoming videos.